can and Carrie can. That's good enough for me. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So guys, um, so for those of you who don't know me, um, my name's Danny Catania and I am a qualified dietitian. I've been a dietitian for the last 15 years. And it's um, a real privilege to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you so to so many of you who showed up live and um, thank you to everyone who'll be watching this on replay. Um, I've not been paid to do this tonight. I've, um, I'm doing this out of my own free time. I've put a lot of thought into, and effort into presenting the facts to you because it's been something that I've been watching myself over the last couple of years as the collagen science has um, exploded. I think you might, um, and you'd probably agree with me just from what you might have been seeing. Um, so um, what I'd really like to share with you guys tonight is this is not about, um, you know, you know, this is better or this is, you know, not, that's not about, that's not what this is about tonight. Tonight's really about having a look at why we need collagen, but also giving you a bit of a checklist. So if collagen is something um, that you are interested in using um, or think you've been thinking about and not really sure where it fits or why, um, tonight we'll give you um, a really handy checklist to whichever collagen supplement you choose to use that you can kind of tick the box and think, okay, I've done that. I've done that. I've done, oh, you know, it's got that. All right. So let's have a look. Let's move across to the next slide. So why do we need collagen? Well, collagen is the most abundant protein in our body um, and it helps to build just about everything from our bones to our skin. And obviously there's been a lot of focus on skin health with collagen. And we'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. Um, it's, an, it's an essential component of our connective tissue. Um, so basically it provides strength, structure and resilience um, basically throughout our whole body. Um, it also creates a bit like, think about it a bit like the glue that holds all of our um, tissues um, and all of our cells in place. Um, and we naturally produce our own collagen every day. Um, but as we get older, our production um, gradually declines. So over time on the outside, it might be you know, the appearance of your skin that starts to show the effects of not having enough collagen. Um, and on the inside, it can show up as things like having poor joint health or um, just feeling, you know, impacting your comfort and your mobility. Um, and apart from the natural effects of obviously the years ticking on, um, certain things have been shown to accelerate our, um, our loss of collagen. Um, so, you know, things like sun exposure, so exposure to UV light, um, can really damage the network of collagen fibers in, um, the deep layers of our skin. And obviously that's, that was what leads to some of the, um, the visible signs of, um, of aging. And then, um, we've got, you know, the exposure to environmental toxins, which can also accelerate, um, the damage to to collagen fibers. So it's things like um, cigarette smoke, um, an unhealthy diet. Um, all of those things can, um, you know, can affect our collagen um, formation in our body. All right. Um, so I think it might be about, good night. Bye. <laughs> so research, good night. <laughs> um, nothing like a lot. Um, so research suggests that collagen peptides provide important building blocks um, when it comes to um, our skin health primarily, right? Um, our bone health and our joint health. So I just, if, you, if um, obviously guys, if, for those of you who've listened to me before, you know, that I'm really passionate about the science and that's what I want to share with you tonight. Um, so, you know, we know that there's a number of studies that have, sh that have um, shown that consumption of collagen peptides, and I'm going to come back to talk about why that's important, but collagen peptides support skin health um, with the results showing that you've got better skin hydration, better elasticity of the skin. Um, and um, they also show that, co that, that um, collagen peptides can actually help with the deep layers of the skin um, this is obviously like, you know, taking a collagen supplement because my husband oh, pulled me up. Yeah. Um, my husband pulled me up the other day and uh, oh, just before I jumped on, he's like talking about collagen. He's like, I thought you weren't into that. And I was like, I, I'm into drink, taking it as a supplement. I'm not into, you know, this, but that's just, this is me. Um, but talking about bone health, so looking at the evidence on bone health, right? So we know that collagen peptides um, may be able to help provide nutritional support for maintaining bone density and strength. Um, and when it comes to joint health, there's numerous um, studies that are now coming out suggesting that collagen is really beneficial um, for joint health. And there was 
one particular study that I'm thinking about um, where there was a placebo controlled study. So really um, well executed study. Um, and they did it in amongst athletes and um, they took five milli- uh, five grams. We'll talk about dosage, um, five grams of collagen peptides for 12 weeks. And, that, and they had a marked um, improvement in joint comfort, range of motion um, and, uh, and obviously the um, range uh, and flexibility, if you like. Um, so just a note on the form of collagen. And sorry, guys, if I talk really fast, I'm just going to like rein it in. I've got a lot to share with you in a, in a short amount of time. Um, but just in terms of um, you'll hear things like hydrolyzed collagen and collagen peptides. I want to explain what those are. Um, so basically in foods, collagen um, fibers or collagen is, the, is in the form of long fibers. So um, for example, it's in things like jelly. It's a part, makes up part of the gelatin um, in jelly. Now you can go and eat lots of jelly, but it's in really long fibers and it's actually quite hard for um, us to digest. And in fact, when the collagen rage sort of started to kick off, I thought, well, I'll just <laughs> I'll make myself some jelly. But it's not quite that simple. There's a little bit more science to that. Um, hydrolyzed collagen um, is also referred to as collagen peptide. So you'll hear those two terms or two words um, interchangeably. Um, And basically, um, they uh, provide support for collagen production. Now, collagen peptides are produced um, or created by enzymes that break apart those long chains of collagen fibers. That means that it's able to be more quickly absorbed um, and basically used more efficiently and effectively in the body. Um, And I've heard some people marketing with uh, collagen with... um, with words like uh, exact molecular weight, um, uh, you know, to our bodies and and what have you. And that's um, fair enough, but that's basically referring to the fact that this is, it's the hydrolyzed form. So it's that, that same, it's basically able to be absorbed um, really well and, um, and be used really efficiently by the body. And I just, I'm going to read a a little um, quote here that I pulled from one study that looked at, um, well, it was explaining basically the molecular weight concept and said hydrolyzed marine collagen, this was in relation to marine collagen, produces, uh, sorry, proteins produce low molecular weight substances with enhanced bioavailability and function. So we're going to talk a little bit about the different types of collagen coming up. Um, But what I want to do first is give you an overview of what we're talking about tonight. So here's the checklist, okay? So there's five things um, that we need to think about. So obviously I've just explained why we need collagen. Um, So the next thing I want to do is let's talk about how to choose the right one for you. By the end of this short presentation, you're going to have an understanding of number one, um, what are the different types of collagen are and, you know, which one is better for which purpose? So is it better for, which one's better for skin? Which one's better for joints? Which ones should we be um, taking? for which purpose. Number two, how much should I take? All right, does it provide a clinically effective dose? We're going to cover off on what that looks like and and why that is the case. Number three, we need to look at what's it packaged in. Um, does um, Does the packaging protect from oxidation? All right, those are some things that we want to think about. Number four, what else is in it? And does collagen need to be paired with anything else to be more effective? Um, And number five is, is it environmentally and ethically responsible? Is it sourced with that um, concept in mind? So guys, um, I'm not gonna, I can see a couple of comments coming through the chat, but I'm just gonna power through this and then I'll take some time at the end to see if I've addressed all your questions. Um, So let's have a look first up at the collagen types, okay? So we're gonna talk, we're going to look at so there's basically four types of collagen there's type one now type one is the most predominant collagen in our body and it's the major structural component in our skin bone tendons and connective tissue okay type two and i'm going to explain where they come from in the next slide so hold your thoughts on that so type two is mainly found in cartilage and it serves mostly for cushioning in joints which is why you get Um, better um, joint comfort from um, type two type proteins or type two collagen, sorry. Type three um, is particularly important in providing elasticity. um, And this is a type of collagen that tends to be found in the deep layers of the skin, in our blood vessels as well, um, and um, many other tissues. And type four it's found throughout the body in structures that create a direct connection between um, cells and tissues. Okay, so it's more like an interstitial type of a, um, a, a fiber. 
all right? So let's talk a little bit about where they come from and um, I'm gonna talk sort of through a couple of pros and cons. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. So let's look at marine collagen first. So marine collagen is viewed as the most superior source of collagen for increasing the body's overall um, type one collagen, okay? So that's gonna see us, you know, with improved hair, skin, nail, bone quality. Um, and we've definitely seen that in well-executed studies. Um, it's thought to be absorbed, or, uh, absorbed around 1.5 times more effectively than, um, than other sources of collagens. Um, and it also contains the same type of collagen that's actually found in skin, which makes it the best form um, to support your skin and improve its appearance. Okay, so type one, um, it, it predominantly in marine collagen. Now the cons of marine collagen, number one is it tends to be the most expensive form of collagen um, because it's the highest quality. Um, and it's also not suitable, unfortunately, for those of us who've got fish allergies it's not suitable for, um, for, for those of us um, who, who suffer from that. Looking on to, so bovine porcine, so either from beef or from um, pork sources. So the pros are that, so both sources um, are more readily accessible and they're often a cheaper alternative to marine collagen. Um, so both, so bo both bovine and porcine collagen uh, contain type three collagen. Um, that's the best one for when, it, when we're talking about muscle fibers and organs. Um, and bovine also does contain type one collagen for hair skin and nails um, and bovine also does provide some of the type 2 collagen um, for joint health and that's why you'll find um, not that I've, I haven't got a picture of it here but that's why you'll find um, that it's uh, it's bovine um, collagen that's in our uh, in our bone broth, right? So um, and that's uh, so that kind of covers us across type 1, 2 and 3 um, uh, types of collagen. The cons with bovine and porcine collagen is that they aren't, a fish, they aren't as efficient as marine collagen and it sh they should be sourced from free range um, cows and pigs that aren't treated with hormones, which does tend to raise the price um, as a result. And moving on to the other sort of main source of collagen, which is um, chicken slash um, bovine collagen. So the pros are that Unlike um, other collagen sources, um, chicken collagen is said to be the most effective for supporting uh, cartilage in the body. And it's also reported to reduce um, pain associated with, um, with you know, arthritis and, and things like that. So the cons are that um, while it does support joints and cartilage, it's not known for its skin health or reducing the, the visible signs of, um, of aging. So um, each source of collagen, I feel, has its place when it comes to supplements, but marine collagen definitely gets my vote when it comes to fast and effective absorption and also visible effects um, in our, on, on our skin health. So hopefully this is making sense. Now, this, the next thing that I want to talk about is... Um, uh, is consideration number two and does it provide a clinically effective dose so if we take a closer look at the science now this for me this is a really big one right because for me um this is where i this is where i start from this is where i come from um for me the science it's gotta it's gotta be there before i uh, before i talk about it um, so uh, you can probably see, I don't know how well that's come up on your screen, but basically um, there's a couple of studies that um, we've compiled that shows that the most effective dose seems to be between 4,000 and 5,000 milligrams um, per dose or five, four to five grams, right? So you can see 5,000 milligrams consumed as a 50 mil liquid solution in the morning fasted. Um, here we've got a slightly lower dose here, but it's definitely, it's over. Um, that uh, that um, it's close, sort of getting close to 1200 milligrams. Um, you can see here um, on your screen, there's another one um, where they had, uh, we've got um, 5000 milligrams again, type one marine collagen. 
consumed as a 50 ml liquid solution for, you know, um, in the fasted state. Uh, here we've got over here a 4,000 milligram uh, dose over uh, three months consumed as a 50 ml uh, liquid solution. Um, and again, 4,000 milligrams here um, consumed as a, uh, as a 10 ml dose. But here we go. It, it doesn't matter about the, the mils. What really matters is the dose here. So again, so what we're saying is sort of four to five grams or 4,000 to 5,000 milligrams is like the sweet spot when it comes to collagen um, and collagen peptides. Um, this just, just on that note, this is always something that's, that stood out to me in terms of um, Isogenics products. Um, we've always had ingredients in products, in all of our products, in, um, in doses that are demonstrated as effective in independent studies. Right. So, um, and I can definitely say that because I did spend two years working for the corporate team and I saw this with my own eyes. Um, I obviously no longer work for the corporate team. So I'm presenting this as an independent dietitian. This is with my own, um, this is with my own hat on. Um, I've re reviewed a couple of other brands. And if you look at the amount of um, actual hydrolyzed collagen peptides per serve, it's around 500 milligrams, so 300 to 500 milligrams. So in other words, half a gram. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's for me, this is where it's, this is where it's got to be. And if we have a look at, um, again, this is just more, this is more um, on relate, uh, outcomes related to joint health. So again, this is where it needs to be, 5,000 milligrams of marine type collagen, same thing over 90 days, um, as consumed as a 50 mil liquid solution. Uh, and again, so the, um, the evidence there for me stacks up. So let's move on to consideration number three. Hopefully you guys can see all of that. Um, so collagen um, peptides are really susceptible to oxidation from things like oxygen in the air, UV light and some plastics um, that they might be contained in. Um, and that's why our collagen elixir is contained in dark colored single use glass vials. Um, it also uses um, state of the art sealing technology. So it seals in the good stuff, I think in around something like six seconds or something basically from the time that they pour it to the, the time that it's sealed. Um, so, uh, what yeah it's um i heard something about uh and i just can't think of the car it's a it's a top of the range nissan um i want to oh, i've got xr5 in my head it's obviously not that but it was like this car was like creating this like hermetically sealed pressurized um uh kind of techno uh, room and basically yeah, it was like precision engineering would have that delivery would have been way better if I could have remembered the type of the car it'll come to me after I do this and I'll have a, um, a wall kicking moment but there you go this is live um, so um, a couple of things so that I just I think that's probably all I need to say um, it, about the packaging oh the other thing that I do want to say is that so this is why we've gone for um, single use um, vials because basically in the process of every time you open a multiple use um, bottle um, you get a little bit of oxidation every time um, and the beautiful thing about this is there's no need for any kind of preservatives or anything like that what you get um, is exactly um, what we need uh, in those um, in those beautiful glass uh, vials and I've been hanging out mine haven't arrived yet but I've been hanging out like a weirdo um, opening the door every half an hour just to make sure I haven't missed the delivery um, so um, so the next one that I want to talk about or the next consideration is, okay, so does collagen need to be paired with anything else to be effective? So let's look at the first couple of ingredients here, um, that I want to cover are um, hyaluronic acid um, or HA in what you can see on your screen um, and chondroitin sulfate. So um, hyaluronic acid isn't um, usually required if the quality and the dose of the right collagen peptides um, is on point. So we don't actually need to add it to ours for it to be an effective dose and for us to see visible improvements. Um, and chondroitin sulfate is typically recommended for improving joint health, not for skin health. Okay. So, um, 
But on that note, just as a little by side, um, stay tuned and be on the lookout because there's a new recovery formula that's going to hit the ANZ market, I think sometime in October, and that's going to help with joint health. So stay tuned. You didn't hear it from me. Um, so if we have a look at, oh, sorry, this study that I've just popped up here, basically just um, it's, it's one example of the fact that if you have the right dose and the right type of collagen peptides, um, that you don't need any other supporting ingredients for them for that supplement to be effective. And if we have a look, um, so thinking about some other nutrients, so things like vitamin C and zinc, they're a little bit different. And if you think you could think about them a bit like um, the toolbox that you need to construct better tissue. So if you like, collagen is kind of um, a bit like having the frame of a house delivered to, um, to assemble it, but you've got no tools to actually put it together. Um, so that's the role of things like vitamin C, zinc and biotin, you'll see, you'll see that as well in um, in the collagen elixir and just a note on the double try uh, sorry the double nutri technology um, but basically you might see that being talked about it's basically what they taught what they call a micro emulsion um, technology so that means that you're able to um, absorb that um, those marine collagen peptides um, a lot easier and it allows them to be um, uh, combined with things like those super fruits that we get in there um, and some of those other nutrients um, essentially to yep yeah, to make them more absorbable and for them to be more effective so it's a that's a winner in um, in my books and Anyway, so consideration number five, we are coming to the end of this, guys, so thanks for hanging with me. Hope this has been really useful so far. Um, I'm going to go back and check the, co the comments in a second. So the con consideration number five is, is it environmentally and ethically sourced? So um, our marine collagen in the collagen elixir is sourced from wild caught um, Atlantic cod, pollock and haddock, um, following really strict guidelines when it comes to protecting the marine biodiversity in um, Scandinavian waters. Um, marine collagen is the best upcycle story um, for me anyway, because it's extracted from what would otherwise be um, a waste product of the fishing industry. Um, for, I can definitely speak from our own, um, the Isogenics collagen, um, collagen elixir. It's definitely, um, it's something that is produced in a carbon neutral facility. Um, there was a, like, a, there's a six word way to describe that, but it's basically, or it's essentially a carbon neutral facility um, with our environment at top of mind. And just thinking about the packaging as well, because obviously what's in it is important and what it's contained in, it's definitely been something that's of course on most of our radars at the moment um, and you know glass um, can be recycled infinitely um, and it doesn't contain some of the um, potentially harmful chemicals that some plastics contain um, it also is relatively low cost to produce and it's made from sand. So it's got, it's kind of like a low impact um, type of a, a, a packaging, whereas plastics can have a, um, the creation of new plastics have a huge impact on um, carbon emissions. Um, and I think there's something like glass can be recycled something like, uh, or they are recycled something like um, over six times more than we can recycle plastic. So anyway, Anyway, um, if you're concerned about them being single use or in glass, um, I want you to put your mind at ease because you can definitely feel comfortable um, having your uh, collagen shot and knowing that we've made the right decisions or companies made the right decisions um, for from an, a, a sustainability point of view and environmentally um, an environmental point of view as well. So the last or one of the last things I want to say here is um, there's just a couple of other claims that I've been hearing about and I just kind of want to um, lay the line on those as well. Um, so number one is um, I've seen a couple of uh, people and marketers talking about the weight loss effects of collagen and I'm not sure where this came from because there's actually no clinical evidence yet to support um, direct claims. So we, there's, you have a look on PubMed, which is where all of the, um, all of our science articles are published and there's nothing that I can find um, on, on its direct, on collagen's direct impact on weight loss. Now, 
potentially um, there was one article that suggested that because collagen makes up something like one to up to 10% of our muscle fiber um, makeup um, and as in, in, and in connective tissue, that potentially in the case where you've lost a lot of muscle tissue, it may help you to, um, to regain or to construct some of that muscle tissue. But of course, for those of you who know that um, there are two most more important things when it comes to muscle that is um, actually doing the right kind of training and also um, supplementing with better kinds of protein um, like uh, undenatured whey protein and casein protein for that matter um, for muscle building. So, um, so anyway, so that's just what I wanted to say about collagen. I'm going to leave the, I guess for me, the jury's still out on that. It still needs some further investigation and we'll know more, I think, over the coming years. But for now, there's no clinical evidence to support its use, only anecdotal evidence. The same goes for gut health, actually. So there's actually no clinical evidence at this point um, to support direct claims when it comes to collagen on gut health. Now, there's been lots of anecdotal evidence where um, it, some people are suggesting that it may help with uh, improving leaky gut um, or that intestinal, intestinal permeability, um, that it definitely needs further investigation. I will admit that leaky gut is something that a couple of uh, years ago was something that dietitians were kind of like, no, 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 leaky gut. And now there's science that's like, actually, no, there is intestinal permeability and there might, and it was just, we weren't talking the same language. It may be the same here, but for this purpose, um, we definitely, there's definitely no um, studies at this point that I know of, or that I'm aware of that have shown that collagen is in fact um, good for gut health. There's way more things you can do for gut health, but that's another conversation entirely. The last thing I want to address here is um, um, heavy metal concerns in marine collagen. So um, there's been several studies that have demonstrated the safety from marine sourced collagen. And we do take um, additional precautions by batch testing and screening for the presence of um, all heavy metals um, and very, very uh, diligently. And that's not just on our marine collagen, that's across all of our products. It's been something that we've always done. I say we, cause you know, I've been, I've recommended Isogenix products for coming up to um, eight years now. So it's been a little while. Um, one last thought, guys, before I let you go. I hope this has been really useful. But for me, collagen is like the sprinkles on the icing on the cake. If the rest of your nutrition is missing key ingredients, no amount of collagen or no amount of sprinkles is going to fix the cake. So what I really want to share, you know, think about all of the, the things that we have um, that a lot of us have been utilizing. And for those of you who are new to this, something to think about as well. Collagen is definitely important for our skin health and for our appearance, but you know, without sounding um, tacky um, here or corny, you know, like beauty starts from the inside and it radiates outwards, right? So things like intermittent fasting, nutritionally supported intermittent fasting with, with the right botanicals, with the right antioxidants um, can really help to stimulate that cellular, cellular renewal process, right? We've got lots of documented studies showing that. We've got access to adaptogens like burdock in Cleanse for Life, which are known for their impact on liver health. And when your liver's good, your skin shows. Um, and, you know, it's, um, I've definitely seen the impact of other quality proteins, like we talked about, undenatured whey, being a really key part of um, making sure that the rest of your body has the right kind of protein. Because guess what? The saying is true what you eat becomes you, right? You are what you eat. If you eat poor quality proteins, you have quality protein in your body. If you have good quality proteins, you'll have, you'll be made of good quality protein. So I'm just going to um, stop my uh, screen there and come back to you all. Um, I hope that's been really, um, in, uh, that's been interesting. I'm just going to come across to the chat box. Could see some things coming in. Um, awesome guys. Wow. There's lots of comments. I'm not sure if I'm going to get through them all. I might just stop the recording there.